All right, hey folks, when I sign off, I often say train hard, train smart. A lot of times we'll think training is just something we do physically, whether we're shooting guns or working out, going for a run, uh, getting better at tactics. That's all pieces of the puzzle, but our knowledge, our minds are really the most important thing. So when we train smart, I often view reading as a real true training. I'm training right now, meaning I'm reading applicable books. This is a really important one. The Gift of Fear by Gavin De Becker. I couldn't more highly recommend it. This is a book I want all your wives to read. This is a book I want your moms and your daughters, your cousins, your sisters, your neighbors, your work associates. This is it. And let me tell you the basic premise. First off, Gavin De Becker, really, really famous and celebrated guy that has to deal with uh, the mental aspect of defense, profiling of criminals, uh, being situationally aware, reading threat indicators. This guy is a really, really big name, big deal. I wanted to share a couple uh, a couple points of the book that really stood out to me and hopefully captivate you with a couple of the stories. The book is real easy reading and I meant to just peruse it because I read it a couple years back, then I reread it, then I got it on Audible, I made my wife uh, listen to it and she was just shocked. Uh, floored by some of it. She still remembers some of the stuff that she had uh, read very vividly. I wanted to start, the book starts off with a story, and it's a gal who's coming into her apartment, and she's a, she, this is a gal who prides herself on being pretty, pretty good with situational awareness. She's, you know, looking left and right, making sure nobody's following her, making sure the door on her apartment complex is closed, uh, and locked before she enters in. She's having her keys ready in her hand. She's doing all the right stuff, but this lady was raped and almost murdered. She ended up going up the stairs to her apartment complex. She dropped something, and as it's rolling away, she heard a voice that says, don't worry, I got it. And there was something about the voice that caught her off guard. Some, or not off guard, but raised suspicion. She's like, oh, I don't like the way that sounded. But the voice was really charming, real assuring, and says, no, no, I'll help. And he was real kind and accommodating. Uh, she says, no, no, I've got it. And he's like, I can't risk you dropping stuff uh, uh, like this. Don't worry, come on, uh, and I'll help. And so he was really, really reassuring and kind of charming. She still didn't like it, but this guy was doing what's uh, called forced teaming. And he basically kind of pushes his way politely into her apartment and then ends up raping her. Uh, it all comes to a kind of a head uh, when after he is done taking advantage of her, he shuts the window and then he says, uh, I'm going to go get something to drink. Don't worry, I'm not going to hurt you. I promise. And something about the way he said that made her just so terrified, so afraid. She realized, and she didn't know how she realized, I got chill bumps just now, she realized he was going to kill her. So as he left the room, she got up quiet as a ghost and followed behind him. And she's wrapped herself in a bed sheet going down the hall. And he stops in the, uh, in the hallway and so does she. She freezes. Then he goes to a stereo set and turns it up a little bit. Then he starts shuffling around through the drawers. And as he's shuffling around through the drawers, presumably looking for a knife, she goes out of her apartment, goes across the hall into someone else's apartment, shuts the door, tells them to be quiet, and she ended up surviving the day. Now, it turned out that this guy had done this multiple times, and he had murdered other victims that he had raped before. Uh, the author is using this story that happens in the very first pages of chapter one to say uh, that you have all these gut responses, these subconscious clues that your brain may be picking up on. Your conscious brain may not be aware of them. So like he interviewed this gal who survived this very near-death encounter and she says, I don't know how I knew, uh, but I just felt like if I had stayed there, he was going to kill me. And, and Gavin DeBecker says something to the effect, of course, you, you did know. What were some of the clues? Um, and, and, and she's just kind of rehashing this for the first time and she's like, well, he closed the window. And he says, why did he close the window? And she's like, ah, sound. But the rape was already over. Why should he be worried about sound anymore? And he's like, exactly. And then what was another clue? He's like, ah, he turned up the stereo. Ah, that's right. And why did he promise that he wasn't going to hurt her? Ah, all of it was clues. And though her calculating brain was shut down because of fear, something else was coming to play as well a survival mechanism that's really processing all these subconscious clues. 
Uh, the real thrust of the book is in this, I believe. Your subconscious is picking up on clues. Under fear, under duress, it's picking up and filtering through all this data. Meanwhile, your head will show up as kind of like this logical lawyer and says, for nonsense, nonsense, there's nothing to worry about. You're overreacting. It's nothing. And meanwhile, your subconscious defense mechanisms are all picking up and noticing something that your conscious brain really hasn't sorted through and uh, filtered. So really, what is big, big teaching point is, is trust your gut. Trust your gut. You got a bad feeling about someone? Trust your gut. There's another funny thing that happened in the book where uh, this lady swore that her dog was an amazing judge of character. She would say, oh yeah, and whatever her dog's name was, yeah, he can judge character very well. There was a, this guy who came along and he was really shady, he was a bad person, and uh, I knew it, and the dog just started growling. And, he, and that dog doesn't do that around anyone else. And Gavin DeBecker points out of like, no, your dog is not an expert at reading human nature. Your dog is only an expert at reading you. And so what was happening is the lady was really, um, the lady was really scared uh, around this particular guy. The dog picked up on that and then jumped at it. You're the expert in reading human nature. Now, there's also a pendulum swing where we can become excessively paranoid, and then every single time we feel uneasy about anything, some of us just feel like Chicken Little and the sky is falling, and you need to battle that. And there's a lot more training that needs to come in the realm of situational awareness, reading threat indicators, and whatnot. But a good, some of the easiest, best advice is ladies, particularly, trust your gut. Maybe a guy that you're considering dating or you happen to be alone with or you're on a train or sharing a cab or uh, you work with, he just creeps you out. Perhaps God gave you that inner creeper alert to rescue you. Trust your gut. Trust your gut. Trust your gut. It may save your life. Train hard. Train smart. See ya.